Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. I didn't have much time this week to record, it's been super busy, so we'll do a short one, and we'll have a quick look at the Honor missions. Now, if you're not super familiar with these, that is one way that has been introduced and is gradually rolled out across the, uh, the different tech trees, that gives you special resources. And why would you want special resources? You want them for the shipyard, because the shipyard it has currently three resources, copper, steel, and titanium, and you can buy premium ships for it. High-level premium ships, that is. So, this is stuff that you'd really want. Now, how do you? Uh, one way to get these premium resources for the shipyard is to play through, um, through the honor missions for the, for the various tech trees where they are enabled. And it usually starts at around tier 7, where you start getting these. So anything under tier 7, so for example, if we look at the Pensacola, you see this little anchor here. These are the honor missions. You have to play them in sequence. So you've got to play through the first batch to unlock the second batch and so on. They give us money and XP, and that's the same all the way up. So if you've already gone through these lines, it's not super interesting to repeat them, but in tier 7, it starts getting quite interesting. So let's go through and see which tech tree lines currently have honor missions for them and what we can do about them. So the heavy cruisers, let's just look at the Des Moines here. The heavy cruisers on the American tech tree have honor missions. First one is trivial, win 20 battles. Uh, destroy 40 enemy cruisers. Yes, that's definitely something you can do. That's easy. Uh, cause citadel damage 50 times. That's a little bit harder because uh, you're in tier 10. So there are not many. Th the, the thing you can probably citadel most are, cru are the cruisers. Or maybe Japanese battleships if you get really lucky. But uh, other than that, it's going to be tricky in a in a top tier battle. And mostly these days, you don't see many cruisers in top tier battles. So this might get a little interesting. Uh, 50 citadels. Hmm. Okay. Definitely a challenge. Then the next one, destroy 90 ships. Once again, this is just a matter of grinding. <laughs> it just happens during regular gameplay because this is just something you do anyway. And the final mission is to cause 105,000 points in battle uh, and po points of damage. That That is achievable. I've definitely done this before. So with something like the Des Moines, the only interesting one is probably the 50 Citadel hits. M might get a bit tricky. Now let's check the next one. The light cruiser line. Have a look at the Worcester. What does the Worcester need to do? Uh, win 20 battles. Again, that's trivial. Uh, capture the control zone 35 times. Now. These are support cruisers. You wouldn't usually rush a cap in these things. That is rather unusual. There are a couple of maps where you can do this, where caps have defensive positions in them, like islands in the middle of the cap. But even then, it's usually risky, and you'd usually nose just or kind of stay out of the cap or support your ships. So 35 captures might get a little tricky. Um, it's doable, but it's certainly not something you'd normally go for in these ships, at least the way I've, I've been playing them so far. Um, destroy 80 destroyers. Well, yes, that's what we're here for. We <laughs> we are a light cruiser. Destroyer destroying is what we do for a living. So that's trivial. Um, set 300 fires. Yeah, definitely. Uh, something like the Wooster is predestined to set fires on stuff. These are HE spammers. So fits perfectly in. And the final one, uh, 40,000 fire damage in one battle. Uh, doable, but not trivial. Um, I've managed this in tier 7 with a York, so I'm pretty sure I can do this in upper tiers as well if you get lucky and you get a bunch of battleships. So I'm fairly sure you can do this, and you only need to do it once. So that's definitely doable. The battleships. That's the American battleships. Let's look at the Monty. What does the Monty do? Um, win 20 battles. E easy. Destroy 50 cruisers. That would be easy if there were a lot of cruisers in tier 9 and 10 games. <laughs> In the current meta, you really mostly find um, destroyers and other battleships because very, very few people actually play cruisers in these top tiers. But this is just a matter of, you know, doing it for a while. Uh, destroy 40 battleships. That's actually more feasible just because there's a, there's a lot more of them. Uh, 75 citadel hits. Yeah, that's definitely doable. You're in a battleship. Um, citadel hits are things you can do. So let's say if you manage to do an average, let's say, two citadels a game, so that's about 37 games in a Monty. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that's possible. And the last one is 120,000 damage. 
that's a relatively large number for a battleship. Uh, this is a number that I've definitely managed to do before in something like the, the Minotaur, but uh, with torpedoes. So in a battleship, decent number, 120k damage, but uh, I haven't played the Montana yet, and maybe she has the damage output to make this possible. Again, cr cruisers would be good to have <laughs> in the opposing team, uh, just because it's a lot easier to get that done. But um, sounds like something that's achievable as well. And, and the lower tiers just have this similar things, but with lesser numbers. The Japanese lines has the gunboat destroyers with honor missions so far. If we look at the Harugumo, what do we have? 20 battles. Uh, capture control zone. <laughs> yes, you're in a destroyer, especially in a gunboat destroyer. That's trivial. Uh, 300 fires. Yes, these things set fires. That's what they're for. Uh, destroy 90 ships. Yep, that's just a matter of, of gameplay. Let's say if you play, if you destroy an average of two ships per battle, that's 45 battles. So that's doable. It's a bit of a grind, but it's doable. And 105,000 damage with the destroyer, definitely doable. So that's really not an issue with these things. Uh, the British line doesn't have any so far. I think the Soviet line doesn't. Oh yeah, the Soviet destroyers actually have them. I haven't even paid attention to that. Let's see, what do the Soviet destroyers get? 20 battles, capture control zone, yep, destroy ships, uh, destroy 60 destroyers. Yes, you're in a Soviet destroyer, you're in a gunboat destroyer, that's totally feasible. And um, again, this is just a bit of a grind, but it's totally doable. And 105,000 points of damage is in a destroyer, again, even in a Soviet one, should be doable. So, uh, let's check that. Uh, the Pan-Asian line, let's look at the Yu Yang, what she, does she have? 20 battles, capture control zones, destroy 40 battleships, yes. Uh, cause flooding 60 times. Uh, yeah, 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 that's absolutely realistic. And 120,000 uh, points of damage. Again, uh, 120k damage battles are not super frequent, especially in, in a tier 10 battle. You, you'd have to be really good to get this done. But uh, it's, it's certainly doable. Uh, the French, the French don't have any. And uh, you might have noticed that I've skipped over the German line. Well, it has a good reason. Because currently the German cruiser line gets uh, honor missions. Let's start with the York, shall we? And the York's honor missions, uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm currently doing this. Uh, the first one was win 10 battles, that's trivial. The second mission caused 900,000 points of fire damage. Okay, you're in the York. The York, unlike all the other German cruisers, actually has excellent high explosive shells. <laughs> You're firing HE anyway. That is manageable. Uh, I've, I've done about a third of it so far, and I've probably paid, played about, I'd say, 20 battles, maybe? So I'd say another 40 battles, I'm probably done with this. Uh, destroy 25 cruisers, totally doable. And destroy 60 ships, yeah, totally doable. Then at tier 8, we have the Admiral Hipper. Now, let's have a quick look at the Hipper's guns. Uh, she actually she does an excellent amount of uh, of armor piercing with these 203 mils, but uh, the fire chance isn't super great with six percent, and the fa the HE damage with just under 600 isn't great either. And she's got a 9.5 second reload. <laughs> okay, so what does the honor mission say? Uh, because there was a pattern here. First mission win 15 battles easy. Uh, Okay, 1.2 million points of fire damage. Sorry, that's 1.2 million points of damage, so that's totally doable. It's not fire damage, it's just damage. So that's doable, we've got 30 cruisers, and we've got 75 enemy ships. So Hipper, not a problem. The Rune gets 20 battles, and 1.8 million points of fire damage. Okay, the Rune has the same... Uh, guns as the Hippo does. She just got more of them. There we go. 590 points, 6% fire chance, 9.5 seconds reload. Uh, 1.8 million points in tier 9 in a rune. Okay. <laughs> let's let's check the Hindi for it. Just for shits and giggles. Uh, the Hindenburg has the exact same guns as the rune and the Hippo. 6% fire chance, once they're upgraded, 500, probably 590 points of high explosive damage. She gets more of them, we get 12 now. 
But these are not AG spammers. The whole point of German cruisers is the excellent armor piercing. <laughs> the only time I usually fire high explosive against anything is if I'm firing a battleship at extreme range or if I'm fighting destroyers at close range. Oh, how much do we have to do then? Oh, Hindenburg. Mission 2. Again, 1.8 million hit points of fire damage. Um, nope. <laughs> I think that is a plate of steel or an item of steel that I am just happily going to ignore, unfortunately. That also means that I have to ignore two more, another two more, and another three more, making a seven, p seven, points, uh, seven items of steel all in all that I am probably not going to do. Because I am not going to sit like a like a complete idiot in a Hindenburg and start HE spamming things in a German cruiser. Um, I can only hope that this is a bug and Wargaming actually meant damage, not fire damage. Because that is completely that is completely and absolutely feasible. But uh, wow. <laughs> so but what if you're in the York? How long, how long was it would it take to actually get there? Now Here's a way that you can actually make this happen a lot quicker. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is me uh, playing on the North American server at around about 7, 7.30 p.m. Sydney time. And as you can see, <laughs> there aren't many, many players around this time. There's a Nagato and a Brooklyn on the enemy team. The rest is bots. Now, why is that important? Well, bots don't damage control. <laughs> And I'm in New York, so what I'm doing here is well. First of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna fire HE anyway. The thing is, if you if you set another player on fire, they'll probably damage control. And you're at tier seven, so people probably have some people at least have learned not to damage control single fires when they are under focus fire by a York. Which means we've got a couple couple of bots to farm. So. Well, I'm going to just head over into A cup. I'm going to keep my torpedoes as much as possible to myself because I want to farm fire damage. I'm detected here, so something is is over there in the cap. Uh, okay, yep, there's the destroyer. It's a bot, so let's start opening fire. And there's a Nagato, that's a player. Okay, that's two fires on the bot. The bot isn't going to extinguish these. So I'm going to switch over um, and start opening up with the Nagato. Well, while that's a player, well, there's nobody else to shoot at right now, really, so... Uh, we'll let the bot burn and start focusing on that Nagato over there. Now, I gotta be a bit careful because the York is not quite as sturdy as the Hipper and giving broadside to a Nagato at this range would not be a great idea. But the Nagato seems to not be super interested in me and uh, shoots at someone else. Uh, that New Mexico though, that's a bot. So let's see if we can get him set on fire. So the, the trick about the whole thing is you want to set fires as early as possible and as many as possible on the bots, just so they can burn down. There's a Brooklyn over there. I'm just going to ignore him for now. And I don't really want to do these sort of things in battles where I would let my team down too much. Up, uh, oh, that's two fires on the New Mexico that are going to burn. Okay, and see if we can get a third one going. And the Nagato seems to be buggering off, so we don't really need to worry about him. Uh, no, that's too, li too little... And just keep just keep shooting at him. Uh, bots are are priority targeting by proximity. So if he's got someone to shoot at that's closer than me, usually he will shoot at them, not at me. Which we're going to exploit here by literally not being the closest ship to the New Mexico. Okay, the fires have burned out. Time to set more fires. Unfortunately, it's in New Mexico. Um, the American ships tend not to burn very well. Like a German ship would be much nicer here. Okay, that's someone else's fire. Oi. Stop, stop destroying my, <laughs> stop destroying my fire damage piñata. Ah, come on. Okay, well, I have too many people here. We're all, we're all bundled up in one corner. And, um, I mean, we still want to win this, obviously. I just need to do more fire damage. Okay, so let's uh, find ourselves something else that we can shoot at. Full speed ahead. And uh, we're just going to head across over there and see if we can get some more shots at that Nagato out. Nice, yeah, Jazz. Is he still in range? Okay, there's another bot, New Mexico. Okay, see so if we can set him on fire. That would be great before somebody destroys him again. Uh, oftentimes, that's the biggest problem that your teammates tend to destroy your things and then you can't collect the fire damage. Okay, oh, no, he turned. 
There's Nagato again, he's giving broadside, but I want the bot on fire. Okay, let's see. Precise aiming on. Can we get these on target? No, we cannot. So he's still turning. The Nagato is giving us a nice broadside, so we might as well try to set the Nagato on fire. This is not usually how I would play a, a York. This is a German cruiser. I would play them more aggressively and use my torpedoes. But I'm trying to grind through the stupid honor mission where I'm doing fire damage, so... Uh, there we go. More shots out at the Nagato. Still no luck with the fires. Nagato is returning fire, and yes, we're in a York. Um, that hurts very, very easily, especially that I've got the Reload Mode 2 on here, which weakens the turret somewhat. Um, okay, that mostly went into the... Mostly went into the mountain. New Mexico is turning in, so these might actually hit, but I haven't locked onto him, so the range is gonna be off, which means they're all gonna... Uh, no, nope, just one hit, because they're too close to each other. So actually, my dispersion worked for me here. Okay, let's bugger off here. Oh, no, don't broadside the Nagato. That's a bad idea. And he's, he's put my turret out of commission again. This is very irritating. Okay, playing York at range is really no fun. <laughs> it's a German ship. They're not having the most the most uh, precise guns to begin with. Okay, Brooklyn. Can we set you on fire since I've got nobody else to shoot at? Let's try. Uh, nope. I mean, he just was this one hit, no fires. Okay, the Nagato is behind that mountain there and seems to be buggering off elsewhere. Uh, I'm just reversing. Should really turn the ship around at this point. No one can shoot at me. But you know, Nagato comes out again. And the Nagato seems to like to destroy my, my turrets. So I'm kind of have to watch a little bit. See if I can get him set on fire. Japanese ships should be flammable. Not as bad as German ships, but uh, not as bad as American ships either, on the other direction. But uh, no, no luck. No luck with the fire at this point. Okay, my turret's back up again. Uh, let's keep her at maximum range. Oh, she's shooting at someone else. There we go, fire. Okay, now please damage Condis. Thank you. And now I can set three permafires if I can get him set on fire again. I'm just reversing here, just in case I need to bugger out quickly if he changes his mind and decides that he would rather shoot at the York than whatever is closer to him. But uh, he doesn't seem to be interested. And we're still winning. Oh, okay, that's three permafires. Yay, there we go. So this is possible with players as well, if they're doing silly things, like um, controlling a single fire when they're under when they're under attack by, a, by an AG spammer. Okay, that's a bot. He's not going to damage con anyway, so that's one more fire. Let's keep the AG up. And I might need to get out of here because that Nagato might have a different idea. Okay. Fire is burnt, burnt out or his damage con came off cooldown. Uh, can I get another fire? Doesn't really matter because there's enough time anymore. But um, look, we did 66,000 damage in the end. That wasn't terrible. I mean, could have done more, but uh, we won. All is good. The Bayern has taken the MVP and again I wasn't even trying to win I was just trying to farm fire damage so uh, let's see how much we got in the end uh, we've got nameless hero 28,000 so we only need 29 more battles like this and then we're roundabout at where we need to be well so on our missions they're mostly somewhat achievable Unless you're trying to do the top tier German <laughs> cruiser ones, I would honestly not even bother. And I sincerely hope that this was a bug and Wargaming is fixing that to not be fire damage. Because <laughs> I am not going to play a tier 10 game just to let my team down for 200 games by trying to set fires in the freaking Hindenburg. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> not going to happen. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you all have a good weekend and I'll see you all next time. Bye.